Hi everyone! Today I have a watercolor time lapse for you, and this piece is titled Rainbows of Rouge. A big warm thank you to Arteza for letting me try out their wonderful art supplies to make today's painting. First off, I primarily used this set of 36 premium watercolors. This 11 by 14 watercolor pad containing 32 sheets of expert quality watercolor paper. And each sheet of paper is double-sided and I used the front side because I just love the texture. And for the finishing touches, I used color pencils and metallic gouache. I'll be leaving the links to purchase these supplies along with a 10% off discount code all in the video description. Also, for a longer version of this video, as well as step-by-step -step guidelines on how I mix colors and created this painting, feel free to check out patreon.com slash happydartist. My main goal for this painting was to practice my watercolor skills and just get better at this medium that I've always found a bit intimidating because of its unpredictable nature. And in the past, I've struggled a lot with blending smoothly, with mixing the colors properly, and also learning how to avoid eroding away the fibers of my watercolor paper. So while working on this piece, I really wanted to just take my time and force myself to build the majority of the piece using watercolors only, instead of what I did in the past, which was kind of treat watercolors almost as a base layer, and then I would let the colored pencils or whatever medium I used on top of the watercolors do all of the heavy lifting in terms of rendering details or blending smoothly. But this time, I made a promise to myself that I was going to try to accomplish as much as I could without relying on any other medium except for the watercolors. And I would only use colored pencils at the very end for the finishing touches. Sort of like if watercolors were the main entree and the colored pencils should be more of a garnish. The theme of the painting was inspired by Pride Month because that is when I had started working on this piece and I had originally planned to release this video in June in time for the Pride Parade but as usual I was too overly optimistic in budgeting my time and ended up taking way longer than I originally planned. But you know as the saying goes, better late than never. I hope you guys still enjoy this theme even though it's about two months late. Um, I got the idea for this piece while I was sketching in my moleskin and I just for some reason wanted to capture the love, um, almost like a forbidden romance between two female subjects. And as I was sketching, I was thinking about whether or not I should use reference. And for some reason, I just really fell in love with the pose that I rendered in my sketchbook and I knew I wasn't ever going to be able to find reference photos that looked exactly like my concept sketch and I also didn't have time to ask people to pose for me so I thought why not just try executing this piece without using any reference at all for the human subjects and after I started translating the concept sketch onto the larger watercolor paper I thought why not make one of the girls demon, like a female demon with horns on her head. Since I'm not using reference anyway, I might as well play up the kind of fantasy aspect of this and it adds another layer of complexity to their love because now it's the love between not just two females but a human and a demon. It was actually a really valuable process to just rely on the visual library stored in my mind because it allowed me to kind of get a snapshot of where I currently stand in terms of um, areas of the anatomy that I feel pretty comfortable with to the point where I can render them from imagination and then also what areas of the anatomy I probably need more practice in order to get a better grasp on it. While I believe that using reference photos or drawing from models in person is crucial in helping you practice how to render anatomy well. Um, I also think there's a little bit of value in knowing how to not use reference all the time because not everyone has time to either take their own photos or search for reference photos that fit your concept perfectly. So in situations where you might have to improvise or draw from the imagination, it's definitely worthwhile to have a little bit of 
a visual library in your mind to assist you and help you carry out visions and not let your creativity be hindered by a lack of reference photo. Oh, and also a side note, I did end up using reference photos for the poppy flowers because I don't paint them that often and I wasn't really sure if I could remember exactly what the petals looked like, so uh, sadly this piece was not entirely done without reference. I definitely needed a little bit of help when it came to the flowers, but everything else was done without any reference. In going along with the pride theme, I know I wanted to incorporate the colors of the rainbow, but not in a super obvious way. Um, I actually made two initial color mock-ups showing a predominantly red and pink theme to play with the idea of a romance between the two female subjects, and also hence the name, Rainbows of Rouge. And, as usual, I couldn't decide between the dark hair and the light hair, so I asked my patrons which one I should go with, and they were kind enough to give me a lot of, not just their votes, but really helpful feedback in how I can play up the theme of pride even more. For example, one patron mentioned that the colors I had used in my digital color mock-up actually reflected the colors on the lesbian and pansexual flags, with the lesbian flag having lots of beautiful pink and red tones, and the pansexual flag reflecting, coincidentally, the colors on the tattoos of the girls. So that was something that I learned and I was so happy to finally be able to pick up that piece of knowledge and you know I felt it was a very lucky coincidence that I had picked those colors without realizing what they meant and it was even more special that those colors actually do mean something significant so I knew I wanted the arm tattoos to kind of reflect most of the non pink and red colors and therefore I decided to stick with the primarily rosy tones for the rest of the piece so that it didn't feel too overwhelming. <laughs> and of course, it wouldn't be a Happy D painting without Luna Moths. I included them because I thought their turquoise teal color complemented the light turquoise circle in the background very well. And I love that they have pops of warmth to kind of balance out the little hints of yellow and orange that we see on the arm tattoos and the center of the flowers. Okay, now it's time for the finishing touches. As I originally mentioned, I really wanted to primarily render the piece with all watercolors and just save the colored pencils at the end for the finishing touches. Actually, in the very beginning, I was planning on not using colored pencils at all and doing a pure watercolor piece. I thought, how cool would that be? I've never done that before. Um, wouldn't it be a great story to tell? But after slaving away on this piece for three straight days, I finally caved and decided that colored pencils were the perfect medium to refine some of the outlines of the hair and make the flowers a bit pronounced and just kind of finish up the whole piece and make it a bit more crisp and sharp. I'm using this beautiful colored pencil set from Arteza, but today I only used two colors and those are Carmine Red and Turquoise. The red is for giving the hair some more definition and a cleaner composition, and also the flowers. And the teal is for outlining the background circle a bit so that it doesn't feel too washed out against the more pronounced elements of the piece. And the last finishing touch was the center of the flowers. I used this beautiful metallic gouache set from Arteza and I picked out the gold color. I will definitely be trying the entire set soon as gouache is a medium I have zero experience in. So I'm very excited to see what I can do with it. So look out for more gouache videos in the future. But for this piece, I decided to just use the gold color just to give the painting a little bit of luminescence and shine and add a nice metallic texture to it, which I think is the perfect way to polish up this piece. And that is about it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed following along with me in this process of creating this watercolor painting and I will have the original and prints available for sale on my website. So if you want to adopt either of them, you can check out happyd-artist.com. And once again, a big thank you to Arteza for providing the wonderful art supplies used to make this video. Check out the video description for links to purchase these supplies and also a 10% off discount code. 
Also, if you want to check out more artworks, works in progress, and just random daily artist adventures, feel free to check out my Instagram and you can follow me at the handle at happydartist. And if you're interested in learning more about how to paint and draw, I have lots of art educational content on my Patreon page, including exclusive video tutorials, step-by-step -step photo tutorials, live streams, podcasts, and so much more, all available at patreon.com slash happydartist. I'd love to have you join my Patreon family. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!